Hey, this video is brought to you by Cloudways. This is my favorite managed cloud hosting provider. I've been using them since 2016, actually November 2016, I, I spun up my first server, which I still use today. I use it for client sites, personal sites, all kinds of different projects. So, um, and I got asked a lot in, in previous videos on how to easily install Laravel onto a VPS. So I figured I'd make this video to show you. Uh, it's, it's a very simple process. And if you are interested in using Cloudways, you can just use the link in the description below that helps out the channel, helps out Cloudways, helps out you, everybody wins. Uh, so the first thing I want to do if, uh, if I want to install a new Laravel app is first of all, have a Laravel app. So I've spun up this, this is running locally, by the way, I've spun up this brand new Laravel app. I've made no changes. There's no starter kit installed. It's using SQLite. Like there's no, no changes at all. It's just simple Laravel and I've pushed it up to a private Git repo. For the purpose of this video, I'm not gonna show you how to push that up. In fact, if you create a new repo on GitHub, it actually includes the instructions on a, on a brand new uh, repo, how to push the code up. Uh, but I will show you how to install deploy keys. Now, if you're interested in a video on how to basically use Git, um, I'm happy to make that video if anyone's interested, but there's a ton of stuff online for that. Uh, and you're gonna need a Cloudways account, right? So this is my Cloudways account. This is the new unified dashboard. Cloudways now being owned by DigitalOcean has released this unified uh, dashboard and has made things really nice to use. And I've al al already created a test server that we're gonna use in New York. Uh, not that that matters, but I just figured I'd mention it. Uh, but if, if you're starting with a new account uh, and I created a server beforehand because it takes about five minutes for it to spin up, what you're gonna do once you log into your Cloudways dashboard uh, is you're gonna hit add server. And one of the nice things about Cloudways, despite being owned by DigitalOcean, is they have they still allow you to use uh, a bunch of different cloud providers here. So we'll go over it. So if I was creating a new server and I just wanted to name it my server, sorry, my server and my application, uh, it's going to ask you to create an application to install on the server. There always needs to be at least one application installed for the server to exist. Um, but if you install a Laravel app first, you can install a WordPress app later on the same server. It doesn't really matter. And then it's going to give you the option to choose your provider. Now, I always go with DigitalOcean. They seem to be the most cost effective and I frankly kind of like them. But if you have specific needs or you really want to stay on a certain provider, you have all these options here. They give you a slider to choose uh, which server you want or which VPS you want and a location. And of course, um, they bill on top of your VPS costs. So a typical droplet might be something like six or seven dollars. I haven't checked recently, so don't quote me. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more expensive. However, it will give you a bunch more. Um, it, it'll basically give you a, a beautiful management layer on top that makes it really easy to deploy stuff. So let me show you how I would do that. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you is in my test server, I've already gone ahead uh, and I've hit uh, settings and packages. I've gone to packages here and I've already upgraded the PHP version to 8.2. It, for whatever reason, still ships with 8.1. I highly recommend uh, just bumping it to 8.2 or even 8.3 if that's available. I guess it's not available yet, but that's what I would do. And then you can go ahead, uh, head on over to your applications and add an application here. And you're gonna choose your tests, well, in my case, test server, but whatever server you've spun up. I'm going to choose Laravel version 10.1. 11 and I guess that's the latest one that they support. I'm not actually sure what minor version is the latest. I'm going to call this test application and I'm going to add it to my Laravel sites. This is just some organization stuff. It doesn't actually make a difference to the application and I'm going to hit add application. And so what that's going to do is it's going to uh, spin up a new app and it's going to take approximately two minutes and I guess I will, I'll be back when that's done. Okay, looks like that's ready. We got a notification here and I'm gonna click this to go straight to the application. And if we click this link, it'll take us to what is now a basic starter page that Cloudways includes for new Laravel applications. So there's some instructions here. I mean, you could use it to set stuff up. There's stuff in here that I won't touch on like setting up a Gmail, SMTP and different email uh, services. So it's a good read, but for the most basic installation guide, that I could make. I'm going to show you just how to basically deploy using GitHub, which is a re requirement. Um, so we're gonna go over in the application settings to deployment via Git. We're gonna generate some SSH keys. I'm gonna delete all this stuff after, so I don't really 
care that it's on video. Uh, and we're gonna head on over to our, our GitHub repo, and we're gonna go to settings. And in the settings, we're gonna click de deploy keys, and this is of course settings for the repo, not your account. Add deploy key, and you can name it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it Cloudways deploy key. I'm gonna paste that in. And you do not need to allow write access. Uh, there's no reason Cloudways should be writing to your repo. So I'm gonna click add key. And for now it says never used. Now if I open this in a new tab and go to code and copy the uh, Git remote address, just copy that to clipboard. We can head on over here and, oops, paste it. Okay, paste this in here and click authenticate. Uh, I have a feeling that we're gonna be able to see that that key was actually used. Oh, not, there we go, last used within the last week. So our key works. Uh, and now we can just go ahead and choose our branch, which I mean, being that this is a new application and a new repo, the only branch is main. And we're going to want to start deployment into public HTML. So let's click start deployment. It's gonna do a deployment. Now I like to uh, deploy twice initially. I like to pull twice. Uh, because I've noticed that sometimes things get missed. I don't know why that is, but I'll click pull again. And hopefully now we will have our code deployed on the server. Now I have a feeling that as soon as I reload this, it's gonna be broken. There's gonna be some reason. Yeah, of course it is. Because we haven't run composer install, we haven't changed the URL. And so that's one of the first things we're gonna do now is, is change the URL and do composer I. And the easiest way, technically you should be going through your command line, I use iTerm, uh, and SSHing through there. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna go to the server settings here and click launch SSH terminal. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna give you a, usually it gives you a warning. I mean, I've been on this before, but it gives you a warning. Uh, and you're just gonna have to bypass the warning and open, it's okay, it's safe, it's from Cloudways. You're gonna copy your username here, hit enter. You're gonna copy your password here hit enter, and now you're inside SSH into the server and you can list all directories and we should see a symlink to uh, applications. So we're gonna see the applications. Now if I uh, list everything in here, I'm sorry, the, uh, the font might be small, but I know that if I go to my applications into the new one we created and I look at the uh, database name, it's this NHPZZ, that's gonna be the application, the new application we just created. This is another one I had before. So let's cd into this directory and then into public HTML. Now if I clear this and list all, uh, you should see that this is basically the core layer of our application and it's what, what's been deployed. Now in theory, uh, I should be able to hit, uh, change the URL and run composer I and it should work, but sometimes there's little snags, so we'll see how it goes. First thing I'm gonna do is vim the environment variables. Oops, sorry, vim.env. So now we're in vim and we're editing this file. Uh, one of the things that I'm gonna change is this. I'm gonna go over to here and just copy this and make sure that it's the correct one. And I'm also going to go over and switch this. Actually, I'm gonna leave app debug and app env alone. However, I will say, that uh, this is a huge security concern. If you're deploying a production app, what you're gonna wanna do is change this to production. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it local, but you wanna change that to production and you want to uh, change app debug to false. Why that is, is because you don't want to be exposing your code base or anything else to uh, individuals using your production app when a bug happens, you want it to just fail uh, with a with an error 500 page, right? Uh, leaving uh, app env as local and app debug as true will expose that and you do not want that, trust me. So uh, this is it for now in the .env uh, for the purpose of this video, but again, you should change those variables if, if you are uh, deploying to production. Now I'm gonna hit escape. As you can see down here, we're in insert mode. I'm gonna hit escape. So we're no longer in insert mode. I'm gonna hit colon. So watch the corner here, colon WQ. So write and quit. And that's that. So now I should be able to cat the .env and just scrolling up, we see that it is changed and that's that's great. So that should work just fine. I'm gonna clear this now um, and I'm gonna run composer install. And sometimes this works on the first try, sometimes it fails, sometimes it requires a clear cache. I'm not really sure, uh, but we shall see how it goes. 
and I will uh, I will come back when it's done. Okay, I'm back. It seems to have worked. I mean, I had to just uh, I had to use a composer clear cache once. Uh, so let me write that out. So I just had to run that, and then it it fixed a weird issue. But anyways, uh, one of the one of the pro tips I have for you is now in this new age of AI is if you run into composer install issues. One of the helpful things that I found is to just copy the error into ChatGPT. Honestly, I mean, it sounds stupid, but that's what I would do. And it, it sometimes helps you, it nudges you in the correct direction uh, because nobody knows every edge of every edge and corner of Composer or NPM. So that's my tip to you. Uh, so now we're, we, are, we have the app installed. Uh, now I'm not gonna migrate because I don't see a point because there's nothing in the database. Anyways, you can see this page wasn't working before. Now, fingers crossed, if I reload this, technically we should see this page but here's to hoping, let's see. And there you go. So um, this is Laravel installed on Cloudways. It's, uh, I believe this is just a blade page, but the point being that it is running PHP, it is being served from a PHP uh, Laravel install, uh, and things seem to work on a very basic level now. Uh, I have a feeling that if I cat the ENV, it should have the correct uh, database stuff already populated. Actually, it doesn't seem to. Uh, so we could try to install that now. Let's let's give that a try and see if we can at least run some basic uh, basic user migrations. I believe that there are included in the basic Laravel install. Yep, there's a create user stable. So in theory, if if we get the database to work, then this should migrate. Let's see if that if we can get that working. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into here. Uh, I'm gonna clear it, and then we're going to again vim.env. We're gonna make our way down to the, the database stuff. So uh, connection is MySQL. Uh, I'm not sure if that's correct, but we'll copy the database name. We're gonna click I, whoops. Hit I for insert. We're gonna make the username that. And, I, and the database name is also that, so we can replace this. And the password is this. Now, of course, I'm gonna delete this app after, so, and, and the, the, uh, the entire server too, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, I guess in theory, this should work. Uh, if I, again, do escape colon WQ, uh, and I then run PHP artisan migrate, let's see what happens. Oh, it looks like users already existed from a previous install. Okay, well, it looks like, uh, oh, that's weird. It looks like we have a connection with the database. So if we go, one of the cool things about Cloudways is we can click Launch Database Manager, and it'll open. And you could see here for, for our app right here, this is the one that we're, we're currently working on. You can see that there is in fact a users table. Uh, there's nothing in it, of course, because there's no login pages, there's no way to register. You can see there's no buttons here, but, um, the migrations do work. I'm not sure why this failed, but uh, maybe there's a there's duplicate uh, migrations for some reason. But in any case, uh, this is how you get a basic Laravel install working. And uh, there's always going to be little gotchas, but uh, that's just the, the the kind of basic way that you would do that. So one of the things I want to touch on before I finish this video is some of the features that Cloudways offers that make this a great offering for uh, the the uh, indie hacker or uh, uh, even someone running an agency, you have built-in Cloudflare um, services that you can pay for. Now, of course, nothing's free, but uh, this makes it really easy to integrate Cloudflare into your into your server and allows for really easy management of this for if you have clients. Uh, obviously, I get DDoS protection, fastest CDN. Now, I, I install this manually by just uh, routing my DNS through Cloudflare, but this is a very easy way to do that. One of the things I also wanted to touch on was also the in, in the server section, which is the, the same one we were in for Cloudflare. If you go to, sorry, in the in the servers, oh, I'm getting mixed up here. In the server section, in the server edit, if you go to manage services and go over to the bottom here, you can actually install uh, New Relic, which is really helpful. Um, you can see your, your Redis settings are here. And also in settings and packages, this is very cool too. Uh, they also support for Laravel Apps Supervisor. If that's something that you want to install, if you want to um, 
if you want to use supervisor to manage your queue and, and long running processes, that is also available to you. And they have a, a tutorial on how to set that up. So anyways, this is Cloudways. This is what I've been using since 2016. Uh, I, frankly love the service and I don't think I'll be moving at any point uh, in the near or even medium term future. So uh, if you're interested in spinning this up, uh, spinning up a server for yourself, please do consider using the link in the description below. That helps me out and helps the channel out. Uh, and uh, I hope that you found this useful. So thank you for watching and I guess I'll see you in the next one.